Welcome to our series of the most memorable Bedlam games, sponsored by Byford Auto Group. I'm Barry Trammell, and today we go to 1983, and one of the most important games in Barry Switzer's career. The Sooners were coming off two subpar seasons, were three and two, and Marcus Dupree had just quit the team. When OSU took a 20 to three lead, the heat rose on Switzer. But Derek Shepard's 79 yard touchdown play gave the Sooners life then little known Tim Lasher kicked a 46 yard field goal that would live forever in OU lore. I'd made one field goal at that point the week before at Texas. I'd missed two. And so going into that game, I, you know, each week was a struggle for my job. I'd, I'd heard people talk about the importance of the Oklahoma State rivalry. Uh, coming from Texas, it wasn't something that was top of my mind, but um, I knew it was a big game, and we were reeling a little bit, too. Uh, you know, we had lost Marcus Dupree the previous week. We were preseason number two, lost Ohio State, already had two losses under our belt, and I know OSU felt like this was going to be their opportunity to, to beat Oklahoma. That's what's probably the poorest coaching job that we ever had to do, uh, not with our, one of their players' fault. It was us, and I've always said we did our poorest job in 83. We got away from things that we believed in. I think we'd fumbled six times, 15 penalties in the game, uh, had an interception. I mean, we had, we were giving the football game away. And if you go back and watch it, that really, Oklahoma State earned maybe three points in that game. You know, we, we botched a punt um, that they walked into the end zone on. And the epitome for me watching it was um, we had fumbled a punt at our own five yard line. They ran three plays and lost five yards missed a 27-yard field goal, and we got a personal foul penalty that gave them a new set of downs at the five-yard line, and then they scored. That's the way the game had gone for us. Um, I remember just before that pass to Derek Shepard, sitting on the sidelines thinking, this just isn't our day. This is just, it's going from bad to worse for us, and I just thought we were just gonna have to take this one and go, and then Shep jukes a guy and goes for a touchdown, and then you started feeling a little glimmer of hope, and then our offense just got on track. And, uh, we started moving down the field and scored another touchdown with about two minutes left. And the two-point conversion to Earl Johnson, which Danny Bradley threw a pass that was about a three-yard pass as hard as you possibly throw it. And Earl hangs on and barely breaks the plane. And, and then that set us up for what was going to be one of the great stories, uh, I think, in Sooner history at that point. Bobby Proctor was the special teams, or the kickoff coach at that time. And we were huddled up on the sidelines and we had the onside team ready. And, Barry Switzer came running over and said, We're, we think we can stop him, let's kick it deep. And Bobby said to him, Coach, we need the ball back. And then Switzer walked away. So the last thing that we knew was, okay, we're going to go ahead and kick an onside kick. So we went out on the field to do so. Um, I was standing 10 yards in front of everybody, speaking to the referee who handed me the football. And Dwight Drain was told, and I think Percy Hines, another player for us, was told to tell everybody we're going to go ahead and kick it deep. And they did, they went up and down the line, but it was 10 yards behind me, so nobody communicated that to me. Um, it's hard to believe that that's exactly what happened. And when I lined up to kick it, um, I mishit the ball and just hit a knuckleball that was just rocketed off my foot. And Chris Rockins couldn't get a beat on it, it bounced off his head and Scott Case hit him in the chest and ran out of bounds with it. And we had the ball back at midfield and, and we set up another drive. We moved down to the eight yard line. I mean, we got inside the eight yard line, but a penalty knocked us back again. And at that point, I think the coaching staff just said, listen, we ha we're in field goal range. Let's just get it as close to the middle of the field as we can and set up for it. And Switzer called me over and, and, um, and not a lot of coaches care much or know much about kicking or the mechanics of that. And he just said, just hit it sweet. <laughs> that was his coaching tip. He said, just, just hit it sweet, just like you do in practice. I said, okay. He split the uprights, you know, it wasn't, and it wasn't short, one of them cliffhangers, when he hit it, you know, he was strong enough and it's it true and you could see it go all the way from the moment he hit it, it was, it was right in the heart. And uh, we went back out there and, um, you know, we kicked the ball and we won the football game and, and you know, defense stopped them and so it was just a, it was a, a huge, personally it was a huge uh, gratifying experience for me because that was the culmination of a lot of work. Uh, for a walk-on place kicker, you know, um, there's nothing better than that to, to win a game that way. 
Um, but for our team, I think it really gave us new hope for the rest of the season. You know, it wasn't the best season we ever had, but had we not won the football game, I, I really I don't know what could have happened to us the rest of the way. We never quit. Our defense, I mean, they should never score on us. That we tried to give it to them, and they couldn't take it. <laughs>